You want to buy a used slave but have no idea what to look out for? Or you are like me and post-purchase rationalize your overpriced 40 years old slave. However, let's get started. The probably most important factor in buying a used slave is the current owner. What did he use the lay for and did he take care of it? Is he the first owner or are there previous holders? Is there some form of service schedule? Has the lathe been lubricated well? Check the oil levels in the headstock, transmission and carriage. If no oil is in there and the lathe was used until now, simply walk away. Adios. You don't want to tear apart the headstock. And also just straight up ask the owner if there is something wrong with the lathe or if he had any problems. If there is no electricity or you can't turn on the lathe, just walk away. Adios. Before you turn on the lathe, you should test the geared head if there is one. Just shift from each gear to the next gear. If it doesn't engage, try turning the spindle, since the transmission is usually straight geared. Start up the electric motor with the gears engaged and listen for unusual or funny noises. This was the sound of a squeaking rebelt, so add 20 bucks to your budget. I will do this with every gear to hear if there are any teeth missing. If you want to play it safe, it isn't a bad idea to remove the headstock cover and inspect the gears also visually. It's pretty much the same as with the headstock. Test every gear, if it doesn't engage, turn the chuck. Then turn on the motor and see if the lead screw and the drive shaft are rotating. If not, the gear isn't engaged or something is broken. Also, listen if you hear anything unusual. <laughs> That's the reason why you should inspect the chuck closely. If there are any impact marks, someone parked a high-speed steel blade in there. To see if the chuck or the jaws introduce any runout, clamp something of known roundness into the chuck. For instance, an end mill or a test pin. I am using a 2 micron dial test indicator and this forger chuck has about 0.12 mm runout, which is a little bit on the high side. Your typical import chuck is rated to about 0.04 mm runout. But before buying a new chuck, I decided to take it apart and clean it thoroughly since the base body had almost no runout. As you can see the cleaning was a huge success and it brought the runout down to 0.014 mm. To check the spindle bearings preload, shift the gears to neutral, grab the chuck and firmly spin it. The spindle should rotate about one full turn. If it's spinning less, the bearings might be too tight or something is seized. If it's spinning much longer, your bearings are too loose or worn. Most machines have tapered roll bearings, which you can adjust. If possible, remove the chuck to inspect the spindle. If it's a Morse taper, put your finger in there and feel if there are any edges. This should be smoother than cream cheese spread on your bagel. To check the spindle for a runout, set up your dial test indicator on the inside of the Morse taper. There should be almost no movement on the indicator. In my case, it's about one micron. A brand new 12 by 24 input lathe is rated to around nine micron runout. You also want to check the flatness of your spindle face to see if there is any imbalance. Anything under 10 micron, I would consider okay. -ish. Now that your dial test indicator is already set up, check for any radial play by firmly leaning or pulling on the spindle. There should be almost next to no movement at all. While you are already in rage mode, also pull and push on the spindle to see if there is any axial play. There are two types of bed ways, a flat bed used for heavy duty work and a prism bed or inverted V bed, which are more precise. Either way, you should make sure the lathe has a hardened bed, otherwise it will usually have a lot of wear in the bed near the chuck. The simplest way to check for wear is to look at the bed further down near the tailstock and compare it to the area near the chuck. Usually a lathe gets used most of its time near the chuck, so this is the area you want to check for wear. And also for dings and dents, not that somebody used it as an anvil. 
There are basically three types. The lead screw only lathe. Your screw cutting and power feeding is done by it. This will have the most wear on the lead screw. The lead screw with a lengthwise slot milled in it. In this slot writes a key for power feeding to reduce wear on the lead screw. And then there is your dedicated drive shaft, usually a hexagonal shaft, which can turn independently. This can withstand much more torque and doesn't wear at all. Just like at the bedways, to check for wear on the lead screw, compare it near the tailstock to the area near the chuck. At best, you shouldn't be able to spot a difference. First and foremost, check the rack and pinion gear. See if there are any teeth missing. Then check the backlash on every handrail by carefully turning it until you see movement. There always will be some degree of backlash. As long as it's not half a turn on the handrail, you will be good. Then grab the whole carriage and try twisting and turning it. This should result in no movement at all. Check the cross slide and the top slide. See if it moves freely, travel the whole range of motion and check for any play. If there is any, there is usually an adjustment gear, which you can tighten. Also have a look at the dovetail on the cross slide and top slide. There shouldn't be any dings or dents or broken pieces. To test the screw cutting, turn on the lathe, make sure the lead screw is turning, engage the lever for the half nut and check if the carriage moves. Then disengage the half nut, make sure the drive shaft is turning, engage the lever for the cross or longitudinal feed and check if the carriage moves in the desired direction. As with the spindle, put your finger in the moss taper of the tailstock and feel for any bumps or roughness. Crank the quill through its whole range of motion and also check the backlash on the hand wheel. Engage the quill lock and try gently turning on the hand wheel. The quill should be rock solid. Move the tailstock on the bed. It should slide smoothly without much friction. Lock the tailstock and firmly pull on it to see if it moves at all. The basic accessories you'll definitely need are a free jaw chuck, a four jaw independent chuck, a spindle center, a complete set of change gears, a life center for the tailstock, a drill chuck, a quick change tool post with plenty of tool holders and a high speed steel lathe tool set. The old saying goes like this. The truth is in the cut. So clamp some roundstock and simply make some chips. <laughs>